We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Heading into the 2024 election, the two main contenders, current president Joe Biden and former president Donald J. Trump, will likely be touting their records, both on governing their parties, respective parties, and also, most importantly, the economy. So who wins in that battle of the titans? Well, fortunately, we have with us Mr. Andrew Moran back again to call this fight as the referee. Andrew, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So, Andrew... um, I think it depends on which side of the ideological divide one sits to determine what the what your opinion is on who had the who has or had the better economy, Donald Trump or Joe Biden, because it seems to me that cheerleaders for Joe Biden are touting his economic success, whereas people who aren't supporting Joe Biden in the upcoming election they seem to be saying that, well, actually, the, all this economic news is pretty much nonsense. And that's the same situation, but reversed for those who support President Trump, former President Donald Trump. Uh, so could you cast a bit of uh, light on this? Call the call the blows and strikes for us. Well, I would say first that if you look at many of the polling data, I mean, most of the country is against Bidenomics. They, they think the country's on the wrong track. But within that yeah. polling data, you see a lot of Democrats also say that the con- con- the economy is, is on the wrong track, that they don't think Bidenomics is great. Now, if now if you want to assess the Trump economy and the Biden economy or Trumponomics versus Bidenomics, the best thing to do is just look at the data. You look at the main data that everyone loves looking at, which is GDP, unemployment rate, job creation, and let's say gas prices. Now, recently, uh, the Bureau of Economic Analysis published an in-depth comprehensive report that highlights all the data or update all the data from 2018 to 2000, uh, 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 I think 2022 or early 2023. Anyway, their conclusion was that the Trump economy was better than reported. The Biden economy to date has been worse than what's been reported. The GDP was higher under uh, uh, under under uh, Trump. Uh, it was higher than what the B- Bureau of Economic Analysis reported. Unemployment was better. Job creation was better. And then, if you look at uh, the American Automobile Association's uh, numbers, gasoline prices were lower. And opposite with, with Biden. Uh, job creation has been lower than expected. GDP has been lower than expected. Unemployment has been higher than expected. And of course, gasoline prices have been higher. So it, it seems to me that. The, the the pure numbers uh, suggest that it's Trumponomics over Bidenomics, but there's been a lot of spin, and and this is true on both sides of the political aisle. You know, when there's a Republican in office, the more right leaning sites that they they tout everything as wonderful and ignore the bad, and that same has come true for now. There's a Democrat in office, uh, perhaps it's in a little more in overdrive now because there's a certain desperation uh, behind not wanting to have Trump back in office. Uh, and I, I think perhaps the media has uh, has brought into the idea, and, and it, I think it's a fair assessment that uh, it's the economy stupid when it comes to casting your vote. Uh, but there's been a lot of spin on the, the Joe Biden numbers. Uh, and we have talked about uh, some of these things in, in recent episodes of Liberty Nation Radio. Um, but I would like to delve into a, a few more specific points if i may so we we hear that joe biden is the greatest jobs creating president now my understanding of this is that what they're doing is all of these jobs that were either temporarily well in fact there's two factors isn't there to this um if i could just put out what i think they are and then you could go into that and maybe correct me if i'm wrong number one is they're counting the the jobs that almost sort of vanished during the COVID lockdown. So they weren't available to be worked. And then they came back once the COVID lockdowns lifted. Uh, so, and, and they're counting those as this is because of Joe Biden's policies, which I don't think is a fair one. And the, the other aspect is that you have a, you rec- they're recording new job data, but they're recording this for people with multiple jobs so instead of uh if some some poor schmo has to work four jobs to make ends meet they're saying hey that's four new jobs in the marketplace this is great for the economy Mm. um even though that one person is barely making ends meet on four jobs um tell me how wrong i am uh, I wish I had a notepad so I could, I could jot it all. <laughs> yeah, so for, okay, first of all, I'd like to say that Liberty Nation 
we've been reporting down the middle on both, on both the Trump economy yes. and the Biden economy. We, we you know, I, I remember writing, reporting on Trump economy and, you know, I used to, I used to write religiously about how, how terrible he was on fiscal policy and the, and the deficit. Yeah. Yeah. Now when it comes to jobs, so, so the best way to measure job creation between the Trump economy and the Biden economy is you exclude the pandemic. So uh, as the BA even noted, uh, the Trump economy had better job creation before the pandemic than uh, Biden has in the post pandemic economy. He doesn't, Biden does not do that. Biden and his team count specifically from when he entered office to now and he does that he that's how he gets that 15 million job creation mark but if you if you exclude the the what i do when i when i report on the body economy is i start from when officially all the jobs were, were returned to the u.s economy now there's been some debate on what that that date was i use august 2022 and if you go from that period onward then you see that biden has overseen about pro, between four and six million new jobs and not this 15 million and you don't see all also Trump losing, you know, 6 million jobs uh, if you exclude the pandemic. So it's all about uh, the, beauty, the beauty of macroeconomic data is that you can <laughs> you have a certain narrative in mind and then you try to sift through all the data and try to pinpoint to something saying, see, oh, right there. That mm -hmm. See, I, my, my Bidenomics is absolutely special because this particular data point is fantastic. But at the same time, you can also, you know, prove something that that, it, that something is rotten in Denmark. So in the last jobs report, the, the establishment survey showed that there were 100 and, uh, 153,000 new jobs but if you look at the household survey which you just referenced by talking about how you know double counting or triple mm. counting job creation uh the household survey so that the, the economy actually lost three hundred forty thousand jobs i think that that was something that missed that the the media missed reporting on in that in that bls report or the sorry the bureau of labor statistics report that's that's a huge sorry Lisa, i mentioned acronyms sorry <laughs> that's okay that, that's a huge discrepancy though isn't it 153 versus 300 thousand lost Yes. So uh, does that mean that the you'll have to explain this like uh, I'm a slightly slow four year old. Um, does that mean that there are more or less jobs overall in the total economy this month than last month? Yeah. So, you're, yeah, you're absolutely right. So there is a, a, the net loss in jobs. If you look at the other part of the data uh, of the Bureau of Labor Statistics report, it showed that the number of people working two or more jobs reached a record high in, in October. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and also at the same time, this coincided with the recent JOLTS report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics that showed that the number of job openings decreased uh, again about, uh, I think it was about 300,000 jobs to around 8.7 8 million job, job, job openings. So all these numbers co coincide and, con and, and connect when it comes to, you know, the 340,000 lost jobs, de uh, decline in job openings, and the number of people working two or more jobs uh, hitting uh, all-time highs. If, if I could just come back on a couple of those points, you say yes. uh, number of people working, two jobs, record high. That's a bad economic indicator, isn't it? It is because it shows that inflation's too high. The cost of living is really eroding people's incomes. They have too much debt, and they need to go back to the workforce and you know try to work multiple jobs to, to keep their uh, heads above water. You know, one thing that the Biden administration keeps touting is that you know more people are working the labor force than than in previous years. But at the same time, he's ignoring what he's ignoring one thing that people who retired are going back into the mm. workforce because you know their retirement savings are depleted. You know, their investment income has has been eroded. So there are many factors of why people are going back into the economy. Me. And of course, you know, because they're, they're, the, the labor market is so tight and, you know, there's higher wages that, you know, I would say nominal wages, not real mm -hmm. wage growth, of course, but nominal wages are higher. That's why all that's not a factor why people are going back into the uh, labor market. Uh, and finally, uh, you mentioned the word, if you could very briefly just respond to this, you mentioned the word again a lot, as in there's a downward thing again. So does this mean that we're actually on a trend towards quite a poor economy when it comes to 2024 election? I, I would say yes, because you're starting to see a lot of the data showing this. You start because so with federal with monetary policy, it operates with a lag. So with monetary yes. policy, it takes about a year for the effects of higher trades to seep into the economy. You're starting to see a lot of the data showing that. So is like factory orders, durable job goods, you know the uh, slower uh, the uh, slower labor market. You're starting to see this. So perhaps 2024, that's when you know a lot of the economist recession predictions will come to fruition. Andrew Moran, thanks ever so much for bringing us such some lively information <laughs> there. I do appreciate you. Well, thank you for having me. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Don't get caught up in the media madness. 
Join our movement for free thinking and free speech at libertynation.com. Publishing news and analysis 24-7 with original articles by our team of authors who tell it like it is. Join us each week for online TV shows, The Uprising Podcast, and Liberty Nation Radio. We believe in free thinking and free speech. We are LibertyNation.com.